This man right here is Nicolas de L'Enfant. He's quite an important character in the novel The Vampire Lestat, and that's because he's quite an important character in Lestat de Liancourt's life. If you've only ever seen Interview with the Vampire the movie and maybe you're just a casual fan of the franchise, then you won't have heard too much about Nicholas, but I want to change that with this video because Nicky, as he's known in the book, is a character that genuinely has a tragic story. He didn't last more than six years as a vampire, and he was only 21 when he was changed into one, so it's not as if he lived several hundred years. I'm going to get into that, but before I do, I just want to highlight something. On this channel, Vampire Folklore, I'm a one-man show. I do all the research, I do the scripting, the vocal recording, and all the editing by myself. No part of my script, no part of my research or my voice is in any way AI generated. I want to deliver content worth your time, so why not stay with me for the duration of this video if you're looking for a detailed, deep dive into the life of Nicolas de L'Enfant. Nicholas was born in the small town of Auvergne, France in the year 1760. He was the eldest son of a draper and his family were well respected, having enough money to ensure that Nicholas was well educated. During his early childhood, he was participating in an outing to the witch's place, a location where witches were burned at the stake in years previous. It was on this outing that he encountered a boy of similar age. Lestat de Liancourt. Lestat makes a considerable impression on Nicholas when he begins to scream and cry. During a panic when they reach the actual location, something Nicholas doesn't forget. Several years later, the two encounter each other again when Lestat subdues a pack of wolves that had been plaguing the town for some time. Nicholas, acting as a spokesperson for the town, presents the stat with a red velvet cloak and boots made from wolves pelts as a thank you to Lestat for risking his life for the townspeople. Nicholas wonders how Lestat managed to overcome the wolves problem as nobody else could seem to even get close without injury. However, Lestat is not interested in such a conversation, nor is he even interested in Nicholas as a person. That is until he has a conversation with his own mother, Gabrielle, who tells him a little bit about Nicholas's background. She tells the stad that the boy was given every opportunity to make something of his life by his parents, being sent to Paris to study at the highly renowned Sorbonne. Instead, Nicholas falls in love with music, in particular the violin of which he becomes highly skilled at, even taking lessons from the great Mozart himself. Nicholas's actions leave him in total disgrace. His father is furious at his son's preference for the violin over studying law, and he threatens more than once to break Nicholas's hands should he continue to pursue a career in music. To please his parents, Nicholas eventually returns to the Sorbonne, but refuses to give up on his dream. This leads to Lestat developing a respect for him considering him a rebel like himself, with little regards for the rules if it negatively impacts their own interests. Lestat then seeks Nicky out at the local village tavern, and the two begin having a conversation about their lives. Their relationship develops rapidly and they soon become inseparable, spending the majority of their time together, referring to their talks as our conversations. It's not directly indicated that they become lovers, but judging from the dialogue between them, the relationship is definitely not platonic. It's one of Anne Rice's writing methods, where she cloaks the reality of the situation between two people by not directly confirming romance, but as I said, the dialogue speaks for itself. For example, Nicholas says to Lestat, I believed you were my hope. I tried to find strength in your light. I'm jumping ahead a little, but it's just to show the connection between the two. Anyway, let's continue. Nikki and Lestat decide that they want to experience life outside their small town and end up running away together to Paris. 
they find work in a small theatre on the Boulevard du Temple called Renault, where Lestat begins acting and Nicholas plays the violin. Over time, Lestat begins to attract the attention from an older man in the crowd, who continues to show up at the theatre night after night. This man was a vampire called Magnus. He kidnaps Lestat and takes him to his home where he turns him into a vampire. Now I'm not going to go into that story because it's part of Lestat's journey and not Nicky's. Aware of his new acquired dark nature, basically acknowledging what he has become, Lestat hides from Nicholas, but the latter has no idea what has truly happened. He believes Lestat has just abruptly abandoned him. Lestat tries to give him signs that he still cares and is still there for Nicky, such as sending him expensive gifts like a Stradivarius violin and even purchased Nicky a new apartment, such was Lestat's new level of wealth. However, no matter what he tried, Nicholas could not find Lestat as his friend hid in the shadows. One night, Nicholas could sense Lestat's presence nearby. As if he knew he was being watched, he tried to coax Lestat out to him by playing a sweet melodic piece on his violin, but unfortunately, it didn't work and Nicholas was again left confused. Lestat had no choice but to come back into Nicky's life when the latter was kidnapped by Armand as a means to get to Lestat. Armand and his coven fed on Nicholas but did not kill him as Armand was using him as leverage over Lestat. This results in Lestat eventually confronting Armand and to be honest, he absolutely beats the hell out of him and basically destroys everything the satanic coven has ever believed in. Which makes Armand look even more weak. He rescues Nicholas and takes him back to his home where they discuss what has truly been happening with Lestat. After learning about Lestat's true nature, the fact he is a vampire, Nicky pleads with him to make him a vampire, but Lestat refuses, as this was not something he asked for. This was something that was forced upon him. He was taken against his will. He had no choice in the matter. Nicholas persists with his request and eventually convinces Lestat to reluctantly turn him into a vampire. When Lestat begins the process and feeds from Nicky, he's plunged into darkness, seeing nothing but dark shadows as if it's a black sea with all of the colors fading into nothingness. He describes the feeling as if he's lost everything he's ever cherished. So guys, I just want to pause it here because I want to explain what this vision means. Lestat has just accessed Nicky's deepest corners of his mind. He's been able to see Nicky's current mental state and also what is ahead for him when he becomes a vampire. Newly created vampires see the world entirely different. They see eternity, not immortality. They see continued existence. As a human, Nicholas was already struggling with that and it means it was going to be magnified when he became a vampire. This is the reader's perspective and although Lestat sees this, he doesn't necessarily piece the vision's meaning together there and then but with that being said, it spelled doom for Nicky's future. After Nicky becomes a vampire, it wasn't long before his mind began to struggle with his new existence. Nicky began to behave erratically and almost transitioned into a catatonic state, hardly moving for long periods of time, which puts a massive strain on his relationship with Lestat. During this time, Lestat also turns his mother Gabrielle into a vampire and she agrees to accompany Lestat in taking Nicholas back to Paris. Shortly after arriving, Nicky begins behaving erratically once again and disappears into the night. Lestat is unable to read his friend's mind due to being his maker, but Gabrielle is able to do so and tells Lestat that Nicky thinks only of the funeral pyre under Les Innocents and Renault's theatre, a place where he did find happiness so they conclude that he must have gone there. After arriving at the theatre, they find Nicky there, sitting alone. Lestat gives him the violin and Nicholas begins to play dark, grey, eerie and uncomfortable music. 
Nothing the likes Lestat nor Gabrielle has heard before. The music is so negatively impactful that it leaves them both very uncomfortable. However, the members of Armand's coven suddenly appear in the theatre and begin to dance as Nicholas joins them as he plays his violin. Nicholas begins demanding that Lestat give him the theatre. He hurls insults at his friend and admits he never wanted Lestat to succeed in Paris. Lestat, wanting Nicky to be happy, buys the theatre and gives it to him. He leaves him in Armand's care and departs Paris with his mother, believing there was nothing more he could do to bring his friend back from the brink of darkness. With Lestat now gone, Nicholas declares this group of vampires as the Théâtre des Vampires, becoming the coven's playwright and composer. The coven genuinely attempts to care for and nurture Nicky's unstable mental health, even referring to him as their divine violinist. However, he becomes progressively more insane and difficult to deal with, making no attempt to conceal his vampiric nature in public, for example. Armand finally resorts to restraining him in a cell and actually cuts his hands off to prevent him from playing his violin so manically. Nicky writes a stack of new plays with his one hand remaining for the theatre. After he's completed his work, he demands that the coven build him a funeral pyre and hold a sabbat, or else he will take matters into his own hands and set fire to the theatre and kill himself there. The coven reluctantly abides by Nicky's wishes and organises a sabbat for him, where he dances into the flames, committing suicide. In Memnock, when Lestat journeys through heaven and hell, he tries to locate Nicky, but wasn't successful in doing so. Nicholas de L'Enfant is the prime example of a vampire struggling to deal with the continued existence of immortality. He was a vampire for no more than six years. He didn't even live the course of his human lifespan. And if you want to continue learning about the Vampire Chronicles series, you can do so by checking out the story of Amel by clicking the card on the left, or you can check out the 10 oldest, most ancient vampires in existence by clicking the card on the right.